Good afternoon. I'll be presenting on Bayesian applications and methods in finance. So there's a lot of applications of Bayesian methods in finance. However, the one I'll be focusing on is assessing return predictability. This is because this is one of the most fundamental concepts and it's easy to arrive at and easy to implement these methods. So why use the Bayesian approach in the first place? As one compares multiple models of predictability, the Bayesian methods using odds ratios can be easily used to undertake comparisons in the frequentest way with a lot of these complex models, multi-level models, different types of regressions. It's much harder to uh, compare them. The quantities of interest in finance are also non-linear functions. And so linear regressions, things like that don't really work out here with sharp ratios, option prices, stock returns. The approach Bayesian stakes as well of the agent updating their beliefs after looking at their data. This information on prior data and then updating their beliefs really corresponds well with financial analysis. The standard classical approach doesn't really allow comparison of these models because of one hypothesis and another alternative. So it really suits the financial analysis that we're gonna undertake. So what else is um, there in Bayesian finance? What else is Bayesian finance applicable to? Predictability is depicted as a nonlinear function of basic parameters. And so this serves as our likelihood function in this case. This is for the return predictability. If this doesn't work, we also use explore the Bayesian econometrics approach uh, to literature on empirical asset pricing. So there's a lot of material out there. McCulloch and Rossi undertake a Bayesian test of Ross's arbitrage pricing theory from an economic perspective. Further, there's also examinations on how betas are arrived at, at using the CAPM model. While classical models assume asymptotics in the time series, um, there's other authors who show that the MCMC algorithm can be used. And so it makes the other time series and cross-section assumptions unnecessary. Another perspective is on the efficient markets hypothesis that all the econ majors must have heard of, a question where managed portfolios can beat passive indices or not. And Bax et al. have studied this using a Bayesian perspective. So, in terms of return predictability, in long run predictability, the Bayesian approach re reaches different results compared to the classical way. So, this is what we'll be, we're going to be focusing on. This, the necessity to predict returns, again, as I said, is a very fundamental and part of the debate of market efficiency. If these can be predicted, then perhaps the market is not um, going on a random walk all the time. Past returns have been used as predictors in time series regressions, where those returns lag the variables in an autoregressive model. Um, because this is very correlated data, it depends on what happens the day before. And so stock returns, just like seasonal data and things like that, um, are going to be uh, modeled in an autoregressive way. This case will focus on studying predictability through statistical significance. So what's the classical approach? First, we have in the model PT, QT, and ZT, where the QT is a random walk effect, which is the market essentially, it's, it's, it's basically an, um, where the market doesn't really flow in the, in the proper way. And it essentially can't be estimated very clearly. ZT in this case is the AR1 parameter. It's the autoregressive parameter where there is a method of predictability out there where you can predict today's returns based on yesterday's. So it's a mix of an error term plus or, or uh, a normal distribution plus a uh, autoregressive element. So 
usually in the classical case, we obtain negative autocorrelations when dealing with the sum of a random walk and stationary ER1. And the next step after this is to estimate those autocorrelations using GARCH or ARCH models. The ratio in these variances is often inconsistent at larger sample sizes. And so the classical model fails usually when the samples are too huge. This is where the Bayesian method comes in of Lamour and Jo. The likelihood in this case is a function of the parameters phi, sigma u, sigma epsilon. Uh, as we saw in the previous model, there was um, a u term, which is the error term for uh, qt, and then the epsilon term, which is the error term for the autoregressive zt. Uh, apart from that, L, L and Z use the data augmentation techniques to come up with the Gibbs sampler. They use, they define VT and give it a specific definition of UT over Sigma. And this is uh, a little bit, a uh, little bit complicated, but uh, th in this way, they're able to bypass some of the issues that they face with coming up with the posteriors. Uh, the joint posterior, again, is hard to deal with, so they introduce conditionals of the V and the phi. And the second distribution is broken down into more posteriors. So these are some of the posteriors in the Bayesian method that they're using. The likelihood, as, as can be seen in equation 13 above, is given, is given over there. Given the prior density on the parameters and the likelihood, the Bayes theorem provides the posterior den density. For the class of priors used, the following posteriors are the result. So we have a posterior for the mu, uh, which is the mean of the stock returns, uh, the phi, which is uh, a part of the, which is essentially the data. And uh, we also then furthermore have, uh, sorry, not phi, psi. Uh, and then we further have the error terms of the autoregressive and the, um, random walk effect. And what are the cor correlation matrices, the, uh, these terms being used here uh, for mu hat, sigma squared, mu and sigma hat u. Uh, those are essentially correlation matrices. And we didn't really study this in our class because it was a little bit complicated and there weren't really correlations between uh, the data that we were using because this is correlated data. Uh, they are going to be using a little more complicated methods of posteriors, which is why um, we're not going to be using their Gibbs sampler. We can code a Gibbs sampler using this uh, as they did, um, uh, using these posteriors that they've der derived for us. However, um, because these correlation matrices are a little complicated, I am going to be using JAGS instead to a uh, regular JAGS method of estimating an unknown mean and an unknown fee. So uh, before going into the Bayesian JAGS, uh, I'm just gonna show you some of the frequentist approach and how that is done. So what I do here is I load up some Apple return prices, a return price data. And I have some of these libraries which help me come up with an ARIMA, auto ARIMA function for the returns. Essentially what this is, is it's regressing on itself with the regressor being uh, the same variable with a lag. In this case, the parameter is zero with an estimate of the intercept. Uh, both parameters in this case, the autoregressive and the uh, moving average are zero. Next, we model the ARIMA function actually. So this tells us what the parameters will be. And then this is the actual model. And we see we have an estimate for the standard error and the mean of the returns, 0 0.02 and 0 0.011. Next, we'll see if, these, if this model is actually, um, how does it face uh, issues of white noise? And as can be seen here in the residuals, we can reject the null that there is no white noise. So this model is suffering from white noise, which means that there is some uh, correlations that are still affecting the data. This is where you, we dive further into ARCH and GARCH models. However, we won't be going uh, that deep 
and we'll be focusing on the return predictability using the Bayesian method and see if it gives us similar results. So firstly, exploring the data a little bit, I used monthly prices again. The goal was to model a, a monthly prices from the last year's five years of Apple stock. The goal was to model the returns of the stock using JAGS. So before moving on to that, I create some graphs to analyze the data. So the Apple stock since April, 2017 has gone all the way from 40s um, to above 150 in 2022. The monthly returns for Apple, as can be seen, are given here, where you have sort of a normal looking distribution. Um, data starting all the way from negative 0 0.2, negative um, 20% basically return to all the way up to 20% return in that month. The JAX code, uh, it's pretty similar, pretty straightforward. Uh, using a normal for the priors density and the mean and variance of this uh, were 0 0.02 and 0 0.007 respectively. They were found of the returns. Since the normal distribution resembled the distribution of monthly returns, normal normal conjugacy was used and this model was come, uh, was, was the main one feature. So we got a summary of the posterior and as can be seen above with mu having a mean around 0 0.02 and a fee having one of 25.65, this is actually pretty close to what the frequentist approach also got. So uh, the Bayesian method, it looks like seems to be working pretty well for the data that we had. And we use both methods um, on that data. In terms of um, MCMC diagnostics, as you can see here um, in the posterior plots, we see that the trace plot looks pretty um, irregular and pretty random. There's no clear pattern there. The autocorrelations of mu are also very less. This means overall that the, and the JAGS that we did has gone smoothly. It isn't running into problems and the chain isn't compressed in one part of the um, simulation or anything like that. There's also no autocorrelations here to deal with. Uh, of the mu. And so overall, uh, the MCMC uh, diagnostics in uh, using JAGS has gone, has gone to plan. So some future work I would like to undertake is uh, using the Garch model. And Bayesian methods can also be applied to that. So that is something I would like to do with returns. This is like a direct, um, a direct, uh, application of uh, the Bayesian method and a direct continuation of what we did here. The theory behind the Bayesian model and other complex frequentist models is difficult in and of itself. Uh, however, the application are vast and so is the accuracy of the Bayesian model. As we can see, we got a similar result to the frequentist approach. The goal now is to continue working on the analysis of Zoe and Lamoro and code their Gibbs sampler as well. Um, it, it, well. I didn't have enough time to do that, however, it can easily be done by uh, spending a little more time on the paper and coming up with data and having data that can be used uh, using those correlation matrices. The analysis in that case would have been much more accurate to the paper as well. This is my, uh, this is the paper that I was talking about. This is my bibliography. Thanks a lot for listening and hope everyone's presentations go well.